All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing well today. I'm recording this after our classes today. It's going to be a very succinct run through of everything that we ran through during our class together in our first week. And it's just here so that you can go back through it in case you're confused about where to find something. Um, but if you were paying attention in class, you shouldn't really need to be going through this video. If you were absent in class for whatever reason, please make sure that you familiarize yourself with the hybridized system. Week A, we are on campus in the classroom B4. During week B, we are going to be online using the GMeets link available on your calendar as well as on your homepage. All right, so let's run through your homepage. That's what we're looking at right now. Here you're going to find any announcements that I post. Please make sure that you pay attention when you get a notification about announcements. They will either be to remind you about which cycle we're in, week A or week B, so you know whether you should be on campus or whether you should be using the GMeets link. It will also show you what homework you need to do, and it also has the link to our dedicated online meetings. I've also taken the liberty of listing our various class times. So during week A on campus, we have classes running throughout Wednesday from 9 to 11, 11 to 1, 2 to 4, and 4 to 6. And then we have one outline class on Fridays from 9 to 11. Online classes, you are expected to make a plan with regards to electricity and Wi-Fi as part of the student conduct that you signed when enrolling with Open Window you did sign the waiver stating that you would make a plan. It's part of our academic rules with regards to um, load shedding and Wi-Fi. You will be marked absent if you're not there. Load shedding is not an excuse. So please make a plan to be on campus, be at a friend's, be at a coffee shop, wherever it is that you can connect to the Wi-Fi successfully and so that you can follow along to that dedicated lesson. This is also just a reminder that the online classes will be practical classes. For the first couple of weeks, we'll be covering our theory, but from then on, you will be expected to follow along in the software as I show you what to do. So please don't think that you can simply sit there and do nothing. You do need to be in a space where you can work in the software and follow along accordingly. On this Canvas page, you'll also then find the links to our various classes. Week one is the only one that works at the moment. I will make each week available as they become relevant, but this is a quick way to then get to that particular week to cover the content. If you're ever lost or confused, I recommend that you go back and revisit the previous courses or the previous week's work. It's not gonna be a case where I take this down. It will always be available once it's been unlocked. You can revisit the work as necessary. At the bottom of our page, we then have our term overview and our academic rules. We will be reading through the overview in a moment. Below that, you will then see my email address as well as the email address for Rickus. Please make sure that you do not confuse me with Jason in sales. I am simply jason at openwindow.co.za. If you want to speak to somebody in person, as I am only available for remote contact sessions, please drop Rickus an email. He's a very busy guy, but I'm sure he'll make a plan to carve out a couple of minutes to help you with whatever you're struggling with. These are also buttons. So if you click on our faces, that should open your dedicated email app if you've set that up, and it will then be ready to simply type the content and send. Let's go ahead and look at our term overview. I've already opened that in a separate tab. So what we're going to be focusing on entirely this term is the foundation, the basics. I'm going to be teaching you the theory, which builds the foundation of how we go about practically applying the principles of animation throughout the rest of your motion design career. And I'm going to be teaching you how to use the software. So if you don't know anything, please don't stress. We're going to be starting from the absolute basics. At the end of the term, I'm going to be testing you on your understanding of the 12 principles of animation how to navigate and use the software, Adobe After Effects, and then how to practically apply the two. So we're going to be taking what we learn in the theory, taking what we learn with regards to the software training, and we're going to start making cool things move. If you're ever confused about what we've done, or if you ever miss a class and need to see what we did in order to catch up, please refer to the term overview. I won't go through this in detail, as you can read, I'm assuming, 
just so you know, the first week was basic introductions. We didn't cover anything that is vital to your ability to succeed. We simply did some personal in, uh, introductions and we read through all of this content together. In week two, we'll start covering the theory. In week three, I'll introduce you to the software. In week four, we'll take that software training to the next phase. And then in week five and week six, I will introduce you to the practical assignments that you'll be producing for this term. I do want to note that it is, it is at this point, excuse me, at this point between week and four and week five that we are going to be switching to the uh, alternate teaching method that Open Window has opted for this year. What that means is for the first four weeks, I'm going to be in your ears showing you what you need to do and telling you what you need to know. But from week five onwards, what we're going to start doing is we're going to give you tutorials before class that you'll then need to watch and engage with. And then during the class session, you'll simply be practically applying what you learned in that tutorial. In week seven, there won't be class. Instead, there will be a dedicated exam. So you'll be on campus, but you'll be writing this exam on Canvas. So just make sure that you have a fully charged laptop or get there early enough to use the campus machines. I'm going to make sure that you then have been engaging with the theory as well as the practical. In week eight, which will be a standard for all terms, there won't be class in week eight. What I'll most likely do is open up those two hours to allow you to sit in class and ask questions to help refine your work and to make sure that you have rendered and labeled everything correctly. And you will then be submitting your final assignments during your class time. We are going to be focusing on three submissions for this term. One theoretical submission, which is an analysis document, and two practical submissions, which will be rendered videos. Below that, we then have the brief. Please make sure that you download this. You can do so by clicking on the download brief that is over here. Or if you scroll further down, there's another one. Or if you look on the week one canvas page, there's another link to download the brief. The brief will always have mine and Rickus's contact information. So if you forget, that's how you contact us. And it's also going to show you what you will be getting marks for that term. For this term, there are weekly quizzes, the theory exam, the theoretical submission and the two practical submissions. If we go through this together quickly, we're going to be focusing on the 12 principles of animation this term, learning the Adobe After Effects software, how to then identify and apply the 12 principles practically, and I'm going to be focusing on correctly exporting and rendering videos. Just a reminder, I'm a real asshole when it comes to these particular points. You will fail if you do not correctly render or correctly label your work at the end of the term. I will cover how to correctly render and how to correctly label your work throughout the term. It is up to you to then make sure that you practically implement that when you submit your work at the end. In terms of the comprehension exercises and the exam, there's going to be a weekly quiz at the end of each week, week one to week six. Only for this week, in week one, will you have multiple attempts. Every other week, for the rest of the year, when you have a weekly quiz, you will only get one chance to write the quiz, and those marks will count towards your end of term mark. The theory exam has been set up so we can test you and provide a theoretical component for your term mark. It's going to cover all the theory that we cover throughout the term, as well as the practical implementation of that theory. What this means is that there will be various types of questions, multiple choice, drop down, matching, essay answers, and there will also be a practical component where you will animate and render correctly a short animation to be submitted during that class time. So in week seven, and I'll remind you this closer to the time, please make sure that you are able to work on a machine that will allow you to not only access the quiz, but also to animate. The Double King analysis is the first and only theoretical assignment for the term. When we finish our theory at the end of week two, I will introduce you to this assignment and we'll go over these points together again. But basically what you're going to be doing is using a provided template, you're going to analyze a video that I assigned to you and you're going to identify 
areas where the 12 principles of animation have been used correctly. You're going to be submitting that as a PDF document. I will show you how to save the template as a PDF. But if you ever get lost, Google is your friend. Please keep in mind that an incorrectly formatted document will not be marked. So if it is not a PDF file, it will receive zero, regardless of how well it covers the content. Then the first practical animation, we're going to take a look at this in week five. How practical assignments work for my motion design classes is that we will always spend a class learning how to complete the exercise. So I'll always teach everything you need to know in order to be successful in the assignment. You will then go home and start over and have the rest of the term to refine that assignment for final submission at the end of the term. In terms of the ball bounce animation, you will be animating a ball that bounces across the screen from left to right. The ball must bounce five times over seven seconds and the dissipation of energy must be as realistic as possible. Not only will you be marked on your ability to animate and implement the 12 principles, but you will also be marked on your ability to follow these instructions. In the real world, when a client gives you a brief, you need to meet those brief or that brief's specifications to the letter. So even if you animate it well, if it does not bounce five times, if it does not bounce from left to right, if the energy dissipation is not correct, you will lose marks based on that. You'll be focusing on using squash and stretch and interpolation, which are concepts that will be covered later in the term. And the principles that you'll be using focus heavily on squash and stretch, easing and arcs. Please ignore this line. I forgot to take it out from a previous year's uh, execution of the assignment. The ball must not bounce three times. It must bounce five times. The format that you'll be rendering, 1080p, H.264, seven second duration, 25 frames per second. These are your specifications. Please, at the end of the term, before you submit your assignment, make sure that you meet these specifications. You will fail if any of these is incorrect. Ball and tail animation, we then progress to a more complex version of the ball bounce. So instead of having a simple inanimate ball bouncing across the screen, we're then going to have a character essentially a round squishy character with a tail attached to it bouncing across the screen. For this assignment you're going to be using the skills covered in class as well as the tutorial to animate and render an aesthetically pleasing ball and tail animation. What this ball is going to do, the ball must jump once, the ball must bounce at least three times before coming to a stop and the dissipation of energy must be as realistic as possible. You're then going to make sure that the tail reacts to the ball's movement. You'll be focusing on the principles of overlapping action and follow through, as well as squash and stretch, easing and arcs. The format for this will once again be 1080p, H.264, 7 seconds, 25 frames per second. Failure to meet these requirements will result in failure of the assignment. In terms of your deliverables for this term and this term only, half the mark is theory, the other half is practical. In future, we will only be focusing on practical submissions. So please start picking up the practical process as quickly as you can this term. In terms of our academic policies, just so we can go through this again, contact sessions, there are rules that need to be followed before you book a contact session. We'll cover those in a moment. But the most important rule is please follow through. If you book a contact session with either Rickus or myself, we expect you to attend. Failure to attend two contact sessions will result in us dis uh, denying any further requests for contact sessions that term. In terms of attendance, you need to attend 75% of your classes, which equates to six out of eight classes. We discussed in class how attendance is captured and we discussed in class how that is then sent on to admin who checks whether or not you attended the required amount and will then either present your mark or update your mark to zero accordingly. If you fail as a result of attendance, please do not make it my problem. I simply capture whether you are there or not. You're the one that determines that capture. It is admin who decides whether or not your attendance will result in your failure or not. 
In terms of punctuality, as I explained in class, I always start class five minutes after the hour. So for example, if your class is scheduled for 9 a.m., I will only start taking attendance at five past nine. You can extrapolate for the other class times. What this means is you've got those five minutes to join the call or to sit down in class and get your work ready. But as soon as I start taking attendance, if you walk in late or if you join the call late, you will be marked accordingly. If you join too late, you will be marked absent and you will be required to attend a different class session in order to have that updated to present. I am aware, of course, that during classes, especially the online calls, that ESCOM and load shedding can be an issue. As long as you put in some effort to let me know what is going on, I will put in some effort to make sure that your attendance does not suffer. For example, if you disconnect halfway through the session and you just disappear, I'm going to assume that you're gone and I'm going to mark your attendance absent. However, if you are struggling to reconnect and you drop me an email accordingly and said, hey, look, Jason, I can't attend because load shedding won't let me back on or I can't get somewhere right now that has electricity or Wi-Fi, then we will make a plan at that point. So as long as you put in some effort to keep me in the loop, I'll put in some effort to make sure that attendance is not the reason why you fail at the end of the term. Migrating between classes is not possible. I'm sorry to sound callous, but I don't care if it would suit your schedule better to attend a different class time. Right now, there are too many of you needing to sit in class or to join the call for us to make a plan like that. We may be able to open this to discussion in future terms, but for term one at least, we expect you to make a plan to attend your dedicated class time. If you're going to be late or absent, we expect you to drop us an email to let us know. That way we can then arrange for you to attend in a different class time if possible. Please don't just disappear without keeping us in the loop. In terms of late submissions, how I run my classes is if it's late within 24 hours, I will deduct a certain percentage from your mark. If it is between 24 hours and 36 hours late, I will then cap it at 50%. If it is within 36 and 46 hour, 48 hours, or if later than 48 hours, it is a 0%. Please make sure that you submit your work on time, and please make sure to submit something. Even if it's unfinished, even if you've rushed it, get something in before the deadline so that you at least have a mark to fall back on. It's better than getting a 0 in terms of extensions, this should have been explained to you guys during your orientation. It is also explained in the academic rules and processes. You are entitled to apply for an extension with a valid reason. You cannot do this two days before the deadline. So you need to let us know at least a week in advance. You need to discuss with Rickus and myself whether or not, and we will then decide whether or not your uh, excuse is valid and then we will allow you to submit the extension request. If you go above our heads, it just mucks up the entire process, and I can guarantee that it will not reflect well on your part. Some very important information. Once again, you can download our brief. Please make sure that you do download it so that you have it available. Please refer back to it if you have any questions about how your assignments will work or what you need to do this term. Important information with regards to submissions. We no longer require submissions to submit a plagiarism form with their assignments. Instead, what I do is I post the following disclaimer at the bottom of each of your end of term submission assignments. By submitting this assignment, I confirm that I understand and accept the terms of Open Windows Plagiarism Declaration. I will also always provide the link to that declaration. Please read it in your own time. What this essentially means is that when you submit an assignment, by choosing to do so, you are de facto stating that you did not copy your work. I explained in class the severity of plagiarism. Please don't be a fool. I will call you out for it if I catch you doing it and you will suffer as a result. If you're the type of person who does not put in the effort and at the end is stressed that you're going to fail as a result, 
please rather just accept the fail. It's a lot easier to bounce back from failing an assignment than it is from being caught out for plagiarism. On that note, students who are working on campus computers, in order to make sure that you are not the victim of plagiarism, when you have finished your day's work, please make sure that you save your work either online in Google Drive or on a hard drive and then please delete your work from the computer. Put it in the trash can, empty the trash can. This prevents Skellums from taking your files that you've worked hard on and simply renaming it and submitting it as their own. In the event of that happening, which I will find, what then happens is both parties are brought before a plagiarism tribunal. We figure out who copied who. The person whose work was stolen is then set loose. The person who stole the work is then punished accordingly. In order to make sure that you don't have to deal with that unnecessary stress, delete your work from the campus computers and delete it from the trash can so that it can't be stolen later down the line. All documents that you are required to submit need to be in a PDF format. For example, your analysis assignment needs to be in a PDF. I do not accept open format files such as Microsoft Word files, Google Slide files, uh, Mac Keynote files. If it is not a PDF, if its extension does not read .pdf, I don't even open it. It gets 0%. I've explained in class that this is so that I can simulate a real world environment. This is one of the stipulations that you need to follow. It is basically one of the things that I mark you on. If you don't know how to save a PDF, Google is your friend. All videos must be submitted having been rendered with the H.264 format. This will make sense to you once I cover the rendering techniques. If it is incorrectly rendered, it will receive 0%. As explained in class, this is to simulate a real world environment. When a client tells you a specific format needs to be followed, Failure to do so often results in termination of employment or at least them not paying for the project. In order to make sure that you don't make a mistake that's going to cost you money in the future, I simulate it now so all it does is cost you your time. Once again, link to download the brief. If you haven't already, please download it now. There is also a submission checklist that I expect you to follow at the end of every term. You should check that you have followed the file format. Failure to do so will result in 0%. Make sure that you have named it correctly. Failure to do so will result in 0%. You will check that all submission requirements in the assignment brief have been met, i.e. when the assignment tells you that it needs to be 7 seconds long. If you submit something that's 5 seconds, you will have marks deducted or you might fail as a result. Make sure that you have submitted the file on Canvas correctly. Please understand that there is a difference between uploading a file on Canvas and submitting a file on Canvas. When you upload a file, you are simply copying the data from your machine onto the Canvas course structure. When you click Submit, that's when it turns it in. Please don't be the fool that fails because you forgot to click Submit. In order to ensure that you're not that fool, Open the assignment on Canvas once you have submitted it in order to ensure that it displays properly. I will expect you to check your work. I will expect you to watch your renders before submitting. At no point will I ever inform you that you have submitted the wrong file or that you have submitted an incorrectly prepared file. It is up to you to follow the instructions and to submit accordingly. When it comes to marking, my only job is to check that you followed those instructions. You will pass or fail depending on that fact and that fact alone. There's a mark breakdown that you can read through. For this term, weekly quizzes count 5%, your theory exam counts 45, and then your practical tasks count 10, 20, and 20 accordingly. If you would like to see more specific mark breakdowns, those are available to be read through at your own time. 
In terms of the year breakdown, each term counts 25% of your term mark, of your year mark rather. So I'll say that again, each term counts 25% of the year mark. I have provided a breakdown of each term. You'll just notice that I haven't provided the titles because those are subject to change. It's always the same content, I just like to word the title differently. What this means is that if you mess up in term one, you still have the other three terms to fall back on. If you mess up on two terms, as long as you do well in the other two terms, you could still pass. If you mess up on three terms, there's a good chance you're going to fail the subject as a whole. So as long as you're passing a majority of your terms, you should not need to worry about passing the subject as a whole. Once again, please read through the academic rules. I'm not going to read through these with you. Hopefully this is something that was covered during your orientation. But please understand that you are now an enrolled student. You are beholden to these rules. If you are found breaking them, if you try to stir up a ruckus and I find that I can fight you as a result of one of these rules, I will do so. Best for you to read through them and know what you can get away with and what you can't get away with. That's it in terms of our term overview. I expect you to go through this in your own time. Some of the information that you need for your class quiz can be found on this page and in your brief. Week one canvas page. Let me explain how I structure my pages just so that you understand. I always follow the same structure throughout the year. The first thing on the page will always be the topics that we're going to cover that day. Anything that is blue and underlined is a link and it will take you to that dedicated content. So for example, the Canvas content, this will take you to the term overview. Right now I'm in student view, so I'm just gonna go back. We've already covered that, so we're gonna move on to downloading the brief once again. I understand that there are people who have varying degrees of attentive span, so I make sure that there are as, as many links for downloading the important information as possible. Please make sure that you download the brief. In terms of what is motion design, that is covered in the various videos that you will find on this Canvas page. I'll give you a hint. The first four videos are important when it comes to the class quiz for this week. The last two videos I have provided here should give you a good understanding of where motion design is in the world right now. The first one takes a look at a couple of the top studios in the world and what they're currently doing. The bottom one here is an interview with one of the best freelance motion designers in the world and he explains what it's like being a freelancer in contemporary motion design society. Please watch these and decide whether or not this is a subject that you actually want to commit to and understand that motion design is not a throwaway subject. This is not a subject that you're going to get away with only putting in the last two days of the term. It does require hours of tedious work and it requires mental acuity and attention. If this is a subject that you've taken because sales told you it was a good way to get the final credits that you need, then all I recommend you do is aim to pass. Get that 50% get those credits at the end of the year, and then move on and focus on what you would like to major in. If you decide that this is a subject that you want to major in and it's something that you want to pursue for the rest of your open window career, please understand that it will involve many sleepless nights, sweat and tears, possibly a little blood. It's up to you to put in those hours. Rickus and I will do our best to make sure that it is as simple as possible to learn how to do, but we're never going to do the work for you. That's where you come in. In terms of the Discord server, we have a dedicated Discord server as covered in class. You'll find the link to that server listed under the post class instructions. This is where you will find links to things that I need you to do after that particular class. This link over here and this link over here will take you to the same place. In terms of the Discord server, will take you to our start here page. The server is here dedicated specifically so that you can ask questions to each other, to your lecturers and to other students. If you've never used Discord before, there's a tutorial at the bottom of the Canvas page which explains how to go about joining the server. If you are 
someone who's never used Discord before, please don't be afraid to ask your classmates to help. We've identified that there are plenty of people who are quite familiar with Discord and they should be happy to help. Below the post or the post class instructions, you'll also find your tasks and deadlines. And this is where I will post the relevant homework things that you need to do. As we progress through the term, there will be more and more things listed here. If you're not the type of person that keeps track of their own homework in a diary of some sort, you can always refer back to this pay part of the page to see what it is you need to do. I'm not going to be reminding you of what your homework is. It will always be up to date and posted here. You should learn to go and look to see what it is that you need to complete by when. In terms of submission dates, Wednesday classes, you will always have the deadline of Monday at one o'clock. Friday class, you will always have the submission date of Wednesday, one o'clock. The only time this is going to change is for your end of term submissions. Your end of term submissions will take place during your class time in week eight. So for example, nine o'clock classes on Wednesdays, you will submit your assignment during your 9 to 11 class time on Wednesday in week 8. In terms of marks, we've discussed, we understand that the progress marks are simply there to keep track of the fact that you are attempting to refine your work throughout the term. Please understand that if you get a 5 out of 5 for your progress mark, that does not mean that you will get 5 out of 5 for the final submission. The final submissions will always be marked on a higher metric. If you go to the term overview and you go down to the mark breakdown, you will see how they will be marked. Miscellaneous topics. We are running our classes on a hybrid schedule. As explained at the start of this video, what that means is odd numbered weeks, week one, three, five, and seven. Those are your week A cycles. Those will be on campus in the classroom B4. That will have me talking to you through a screen and Rickus will be there in person to help you with anything you might need help with. Your even numbered weeks, week two, four, six, and eight. Those are our week B cycles. They are online. You are expected to make a plan to have access to internet and electricity so that you can join the Google Meets call. The link for that call is listed on your calendar or on the Motion Design homepage. It's the same link for every class. So if you're in a Wednesday 9 to 11 class and you need to attend an 11 to 1 class, use the same link. Next up, what do we expect of our Motion Design students? This is then also important when it comes to emailing your lecturers and for booking contact sessions. We expect you to be autonomous adults. We are not here to do the work for you. What this means is, before you book a contact session, we expect you to have done the following seven things. In term one, Rickus and I will be lenient with regards to helping you. But in term two onwards, if we find that you have missed any of these steps before you send us an email, we will be deducting 5% from your total mark at the end of the term. The first thing that you should always do is read the brief. If you've got any questions about the assignments or about the term as a whole, refer back to the term overview page. We also then expect you to have watched the class recordings and the tutorials. There will always be a recording made available. When there's anything practical, there will always be a tutorial to accompany it. Contact sessions are not there to provide private tutor sessions. It does not mean that you can mess around in class and then waste our time for two hours outside of class as we reteach the content. If you miss a class or if you miss something in class, we expect you to then do some self-study by watching the videos and learning accordingly. The next thing we expect is that you Google the problem. 
this is going to be the most egregious part in future terms when sending us emails. If at any point we can simply copy the question and paste it in Google to receive the answer, I will minus 5% from your total at the end of the term for wasting my time. As adults, you are expected to start trying to find solutions to your problems. This simulates a real world environment. If you're an employee at an animation studio, your boss will not have time to answer every question you have. If you're an entrepreneur and you're going to be running your own studio, well then you damn well need to be able to ask and answer your own questions. If you're involved with ChatGBT, we recommend that you post your question in that as well. I myself am not a fan of the AI uprising, so I don't engage in ChatGBT, but I'm sure plenty of your colleagues do. We also expect you to ask the other students in your class. In order to help facilitate this, you have the Discord server. We have a dedicated help channel on the Discord server. So, if you post your question in the MD100 channel and no one can answer you, then you should post in the help channel. If no one can answer you there, then you should be asking your teaching assistant or the honor student on Discord. Once these seven steps have been met, if you still cannot find the answer, then you may email either Rickus or myself and we will do our best to help you. The reason why we want you to follow these steps is to make sure that you can solve the small problems yourselves while we are left dealing with the big problems. As you can imagine, if the problem still persists after these seven steps, it's a big problem. It's going to take some time for Rickus and I to find the solution. By following this process, we ensure that Rickus and I have that time available. Then, plagiarism, we've discussed. We understand that this is not something that you should engage in. Just as a reminder, the results of plagiarism means that you are expelled from open window, it goes on your criminal record, and you are barred from applying at any other tertiary education, education institution for the next five years. If you find yourself in a situation where you think you're going to fail, either because you didn't do the work and you left it too late, or because ESCOM hit, blew up your computer, and you lost everything, please don't steal someone else's. It's a lot easier to bounce back from failing than it is from recovering from a plagiarism case being lobbied against you. Lastly, my golden rule, as I discussed in class, Quoting from the film Fired Up, you can piss on my face, but don't tell me it's raining. What this translates to is keep me in the loop and be honest about it. If you're going to be submitting late because you were helping your friends with their film project and you were out in the bush for a weekend, tell me that. I'll make a plan. But if you start using excuses and you tell me that your grandmother's died for the third time, I'm not going to make a plan. You're going to suffer as a result. In terms of the class content for this week, just a bunch of videos. Please watch all of them. You will find answers for your class quiz in these videos. The first video answers the question, what is motion design? The takeaway from this is that it is a very broad and vague topic. The second one, what is motion graphics? Is there a difference between the two? The third video is something we should aspire to. We didn't have time to watch this in class together this week, so we'll watch it together next week. But please feel free to watch it and share it with your friends. This particular video has the ability to convey complex philosophical questions with abstract shapes. It's highly, highly thought-provoking, and it's something that by the time you leave Open Window, you should start aspiring to produce yourselves. The fourth video, Motion Makes a Masochist, should help set your expectations for this subject. This is not an easy subject. It can be fun and it can be simple. But the simpler it becomes, the more complex the finite details are. As I said before, this is not a subject that you're going to get away with only putting half effort in. If you're not willing to spend hours and hours at night or in your spare time refining a project over and over again, then this is not the subject for you. 
as I said earlier, these two then help to place the idea of motion design as a industry within contemporary context, what's happening in the world of motion right now. Please watch these and decide whether or not this is a world you wish to be involved in. And then please set your mark expectations accordingly. In the post-class instructions, you need to complete your week one quiz. As I've said, your quizzes will always be open book and they will always cover the content that we covered in that class. In this week's class, we covered the motion design homepage, the term overview page and the brief. And it was homework then to watch the videos. What that should tell you is that you will need to source those various pages and videos in order to find the answers for your quiz. You need to join the Discord server as I've discussed and by week three, you need to have Adobe After Effects installed and up to date. Please make sure that you install it ahead of class so that when we get in, we can simply open and start optimizing it. I recommend that you use the next two weeks to open the software ahead of time and check that the machine you're working on can run it. If you're using your parent's laptop from 10 years ago that barely struggles or like kind of struggles to open Microsoft Word or Excel, you're not going to be able to successfully run the software enough to pass the assignments. If that's the case, please make sure that you make a plan to get to campus so that you can use the on-campus machines. In terms of homework, you need to complete your class quiz by these dates and you need to have joined the Discord server by these dates. In terms of your quiz, so we can see what that looks like. As I've said, all your quizzes will be open book. When it comes to this particular quiz, you are required to achieve full marks. Because the information I cover today is very important, I've allowed you to reattempt this quiz as many times as necessary, but I expect you to retake it until you get it 100% right. You need to know the information that we covered this week. You will have multiple attempts for this quiz. You will see which answers you got wrong after you have submitted the quiz. I then expect you to retake it as many times as necessary to get 100%. Please make sure that you fully submit the quiz. Once again, there is a difference between simply uploading something and submitting it. You should see your results at the end. Keep doing so until you get full marks. And that's it. All the boring stuff is now done and covered. Starting from next week, we will no longer need to go through this kind of stuff. You'll be, have been quizzed on it. You should understand it. So for the rest of the year, we can focus on just doing the cool stuff. In terms of what you need to do, as I've said, please make sure that you complete the quiz as well as join the Discord server. Remember that next week is week two. Week two is a week B cycle, so it will be online. I'll see you guys in that call.